Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather, I am a styling, skin care, hair care, self care enthusiast. I don't have any training or anything, I just have people ask me questions sometimes about things, so I decided to start a YouTube channel to share my thoughts. So um, today's video is a little bit more on the self care side of things. Um, and I wanna tell you about my experience in losing my voice and getting it back. You could probably hear that my voice is a little like squeaky still. It's the timbre is not quite there. The timbre is actually the sound of your voice. So like, you know, if I were to call you versus your mom call you, you can tell the difference between us even though we're both adult women, that's the timbre, right? So my timbre is not quite um, what it could be or it should be. And of course now my cats choose to make noise, that's great. Um, but uh, it's been a week and I, I pretty much have it back. So we're gonna back this up here. Um, for Thanksgiving, I went about two and a half hours south um, with my parents to visit my cousins and my aunt and uncle. Of course, this is when the cats start making noise. Um, and um, uh, so, you know, Thursday, uh, there's just there's a lot of people um, at my aunt's house. Uh, there's probably like 40 people, but this year there was maybe 30. There were a lot fewer than, than usual. And um, uh, I brought my tarot cards with me. So. Uh, usually we kind of last like the whole weekend um, with this kind of thing. So I did like 40 or maybe even 50 tarot readings between um, Friday and Saturday at my cousin's house. And so Friday I felt fine. Saturday um, is when I started to get a sore throat and it was just on like one side of my throat. And I was like, I don't, this, this feels weird. I don't know. I tend to get sore throats easily anyway because I have a lot of post nasal drip. It's always sort of been there. Um, so um, I, I just, I get sore throats. Um, and so I, I did decide to take a COVID test because my uncle had some and I just wanted to be safe and it was, you know, it was COVID negative. And then Saturday, um, you know, uh, we went to a different cousin's house and I'm still doing the readings and I could feel that my voice was getting strained and I'm like, everybody's so excited about these readings and like, it's a cool way to get to know my cousins better. And so I just kind of kept doing them, which was probably a mistake. And so, um, Sunday I taught four lessons in the morning, which was exhausting. Um, and then uh, it, was, it was a little difficult on the vocal cords and then I promptly took a nap. Um, didn't really talk the rest of Sunday. Monday, I had a four hour choir rehearsal in the evening because um, this, uh, if anybody else is a musician who's, who's watching this, um, y'all know that December is the busiest time of year for us. This is one of the few times of year where we can consistently make money and consistently have work. And even if you're just like, not just, but like an amateur, which by the way, the word amateur means that you just love the thing. It's, it's like not a bad word. Um, so if you're an amateur though, that's like not getting paid, like you're still, there's still a lot of opportunities this time of year for, for you to, you know, use your instrument, whatever that instrument is. And so I am a professional singer. Um, it's not my day job, but I've gotten paid to do it, which means I'm a professional. And um, so this, uh, this series of concerts that I have, there's a lot of them. And I have a part, um, it's double cast. So there's another woman that's doing the part, um, but I, I have a part that's basically by myself. Um, and so uh, I, I need to have my voice to be able to sing, right? So I go to choir on Monday night um, and uh, you know, sing this four hour rehearsal. And my throat, you know, I keep kind of clearing my throat and coughing a little bit to try to, it, it, it feels like there's something happening in my throat and I, I kept doing that. It was hard to talk by the end of the evening. Um, I had carpooled with my friend and I went back to her house for a minute. She has, um, she's fostering kittens. So I said hi to the kittens and everything. And then throughout the night between Monday and Tuesday, I'm like coughing and I'm sort of trying to vocalize a little bit and see what's going on. And um, it's, I'm getting very frustrated. There's not a lot that's coming out. It doesn't feel good. And I kind of kept pushing it, which was a mistake. Um, so Tuesday I wake up, I have no singing voice and I have very little speaking voice. I'm like, well, this, this isn't good. Um, so we actually had dress rehearsals. We have two dress rehearsals. So one was Tuesday and one was Thursday. So Tuesday, um, I just decided to stay home and chill and, and be on total vocal rest. Um, Wednesday, uh, I, I had five work meetings on Wednesday, which is kind of unusual and I, I have to talk throughout them. And so that was pretty painful. Um, and Wednesday night I had um, a student as well that I, I went and taught a music lesson, so that was also painful. So Thursday I had a dress rehearsal. I, Thursday was probably the worst day. Um, I couldn't get anything out. I could hardly talk. Everything was incredibly painful. And I go to this rehearsal. Um, it's, it's a big long story. There's some drama that's happening, not with the people in the choir, but with sort of the management surrounding the choir. So it's not even our director, it's like other people. Um, and so we're all kind of emotional um, with this particular set of performances. And so like I'm sitting there and I, I, can't, I can't sing my solo thing. I can't do the mic check. Um, and then, uh, you know, with, with my friends, like I can't sing 
anything at all. And I just, I, I basically cried through the entire rehearsal on Thursday. I was very upset. And um, I'm trying to be on vocal rest, right? Because that's, um, I'm gonna go through the list of things that I did to, to get over this, so you guys know. Um, and I just, I was, I was beside myself. So Friday, I was supposed to have my little solo thing. Didn't happen. The girl in the other cast, the, the other castmate, she, she had to do it for me. Um, and I was just, you know, it's, it's, it's upsetting, right? So then, um, you know, Saturday rolls around. I canceled all my students for the weekend. Um, Saturday rolls around and I, I get to choir and I can sing a few notes. Uh, my friend was like punching me in the arm, like, stop, stop, stop singing, stop making noise. Um, so I actually uh, muppeted, as, as one of my other friends calls it. Um, I muppeted all the, all the music and just kind of mouthed along to it. Um, and Sunday, I had a little less than half my range left. So I'm a soprano too. Um, so I can sing, I can sing soprano one uh, notes. And I actually like singing coloratura pieces, which are the pieces that like move really fast and go really high. And it's very like agile, but they're, they're very difficult for me to do. It takes a while for me to get those. Um, and so soprano two is a, a little bit of a lower soprano. That's where like the meat of my voice really is. Um, and so for anybody that, you know, is in music, I forget the, I forget the numbers that go with the, all right. So I can sing, you know, almost an octave below middle C and I can sing two and a half octaves above middle C. Um, so my range on Sunday was that full octave below middle C and about one octave above regular C. Um, so I haven't done a full vocalization since um, Sunday. Uh, today's now Tuesday, but um, I'm, I'm pretty confident I have my whole range back. I've been singing through my solo. It's a, it's a short little thing that I have um, and I can do it. Uh, this is actually, um, I've had a couple of work meetings today, but this is the most that I've talked in a week, right? Um, and I'm still not 100% there. After this, I'm going back to 100% vocal rest. Um, I wouldn't be recording this if I didn't feel confident that, that this would not do any further damage to my vocal cords. So, um, so what actually happened, um, it, I think it was just vocal strain. Um, I think it was laryngitis. Um, and so, um, so it's, it's, you know, laryngitis is just, you lose your voice, right? Um, it might be because of a virus. It might be because of strain. Um, it might be because of an injury, but that's what laryngitis is, is when you lose your voice. So what did I do to get my voice back? Um, so there's no quick fix to this. And I was very upset um, because like I have some friend, you know, being a singer um, it, that people I've heard people say like, oh, you just get a steroid shot and, you know, 24 hours, you're, you're back to you're back to normal. Um, and so, you know, I have taken steroids before for this kind of thing, but it's really it's not a miracle cure. And also because I had a sore throat, in addition to having lost my voice, a lot of places didn't want to see me in person. So I actually ended up having a telehealth visit. Um, to just confirm like I'm doing everything I possibly can. Um, and there's, 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 no quick, there's no quick fix. Like a steroid um, injection might work, but first of all, you have to find somebody to do it, which could be difficult. Um, and you can't do it very often. Like the cortisone shot, you can only get that once every like five years. Um, and so I think that's really, you know, you either have to be like a much bigger, more famous singer than I am, or, you know, have much di more dire straits or have a personal doctor or, or, or like, I don't, I don't know exactly how that works. That's not what I did for this particular situation. Um, so the first thing that you should do is stop vocalizing entirely. No talking, no singing. You are Ariel from the Little Mermaid. Okay. You're not doing anything. Um, even when you try to mouth words, um, sometimes air is passing through your vocal cords. Um, to, to, to mouth those words, and that's not good for you either. Whispering is terrible for you. Do not whisper, do not do that. Do you think it's putting less stress on your vocal cords because you're not making a lot of sound? It's putting more stress on your vocal cords. It's actually much more difficult from a biological perspective to whisper than it is to use your regular voice. Um, the suggestions that I was, re well, I know um, from sort of doing uh, sight singing, if you, if you take a piece of music and you've never sung it before, um, it's not just like a piano where you can play the key and there's the note, you know, you have to figure it out with your voice, right? And so one of the things that we do sometimes in that process is speak through a rhythm. So we're speaking through pitches on rhythms. And so I was taught that you're always supposed to do that a little bit higher than your natural speaking voice because, um, you know, it helps to lift the soft palate. It helps to take some of the stress off the vocal cords because if you just start sort of speaking Speaking on those rhythms, your voice can start to get down and down and down and down. And that that low sort of monotonous register that's too like too low for you in particular, whatever that sort of sounds like, um, that can actually be more damaging and more stressful to your vocal cords. So we just try to talk a little bit higher. Um, I used to talk to my students about Julia Child, and they actually knew who that was at that point, because I don't know if kids today would know who that is. Um, 
but yes, so it was very, very difficult for me. Um, I, I don't think I could do it, you know, actually absolutely 100%. Thursday, I came pretty close. Um, but, you know, just literally stop talking in its entirety. That's the, the absolute best thing that you can do. Um, laryngitis does tend to get worse for a couple of days and then it gets better. So, you know, Monday into Tuesday is when I got this whole thing. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday was pretty bad. Friday, it started to get better. Saturday, it's, it was better. Sunday, it was better. Yesterday, I, I pretty much sounded like this. I'm, I'd say, you know, I still have another 5% left to go. Today, I'm now back to it being Tuesday. Um, and I have four shows this week to do for my, my holiday concerts, and I am singing the solo in two of them. So, um, so I'm gonna be, again, going back on vocal rest after this. So, um, do not talk, do not sing, do not whisper, don't mouth words. Use your phone and type on your phone and show people the message. That's what I did. It worked fantastically. Um, so that's the number one thing I can recommend for you to do. Um, number two thing is get as much sleep as you possibly, possibly, possibly can. Um, you know, everybody has obligations and things to do. So, you know, some people have issues with sleep. I actually, I tried to go to sleep. I want to say it was Saturday. Um, so I had a show. I came home. I was in bed by like eight o'clock and I tried to go to sleep right away. I didn't fall asleep until four in the morning. Um, and so it can be difficult, but at least the rest, and there's been studies that have proven that that just resting and laying down and keeping your eyes closed, even if you're not sleeping, does help. Um, and it really does, it does help me um, quite a bit to do that. So that's the number two thing I can recommend to do is, is sleep. Um, a very close third is hydration. Um, so there's a couple of things about hydration here. Um, tea with honey is often the thing that people, you know, talk about. Um, it, you don't really think about this, but like when you're swallowing or whatever, um, the way the uh, biology works in your throat is that that liquid is not actually going over your vocal cords because if it did, you would be choking. It would be going down into your lungs. So it's only helping the part of your esophagus that's actually going down to your stomach. Um, so it, it's, it's almost like a misnomer that some of these things are going to soothe your throat because it's not actually going to soothe your vocal cords, which I never really thought about that until I read it. <laughs> Um, so, um, uh, the tea that you should choose, don't use black tea because black tea can actually dehydrate you. Um, so some kind of, um, herbal tea is good. Uh, use some lemon, but like not, not too much lemon because the acidity can actually burn your throat a little bit. Um, and then the honey is, uh, because honey is a natural, um, I want to say it's an antibacterial. It's, it's really good for like healing things, um, and, and killing killing things that are happening in your throat. Um, additionally, if there are allergies at play at all and whatever's happening, um, if the honey is locally sourced, then those bees are, you know, using those, those plants that are allergens to you to make the honey. So it can actually help sort of inoculate your body in a weird way um, to, uh, against those things and actually make your allergies better. So um, the warm tea also um, has steam. So like uh, steam getting into a shower, um, that, that steam can help you sort of get into your nasal passages and that kind of thing. So I cannot recommend a humidifier enough. Um, I've been sleeping with my new humidifier for I think four days at this point. Not only has it helped this heal and help my throat, it's helped my post nasal drip because post nasal drip is often there because you're dehydrated, even though it feels like you shouldn't want to like drink more or whatever. Um, that's why that's, that's, that's one of the reasons anyway, why that's happening. And so um, I got this cool mist uh, humidifier. It's, it was about $30 on Amazon and it's been low. I, I love it. I might sleep with it on forever. Um, especially in the summertime, if it's um, hot outside, it actually keeps you nice and cool, so I'm not sweating. Um, along those veins, I got um, a nebulizer as well. So that's just a personal humidifier, basically. I can't have the whole thing on my face because um, it actually makes me cough. But, um, but I did get one, um, and I keep it, I keep it like here. Um, so if I'm going somewhere, like if I want to really prepare myself for the weekend or whatever, um, you know, you can just have a little pocket nebulizer, and that's a, that's a pocket humidifier for yourself. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to, um, to stay hydrated, but just, just keep, keep drinking those liquids, warm liquids, not super hot, um, cold is fine though, and uh, no black tea, no coffee. Um, so next thing is some um, supplements that I've been taking. <coughs> Excuse me, so this is also happening. Um, so there's a thing called serapeptase that I had never heard of, but a friend of mine, also in this choir, she said, you know, her, um, her wife was doing speaking engagements and she went to like a Chinese medicine store and they recommended this, this serapeptase stuff. So, um, you know, I took pictures of the label. I read through it pretty carefully. I tried to look up and see if there were any interactions with anything else that I'm taking. 
And so um, she she gave me some, she actually opened the bottle in front of me. She's like, look, I'm not trying to give you anything. I'm like, no, I, she's my friend. I know she's not trying to give me anything weird. Um, and so the serapeptase you have to take once a day in the morning on an empty stomach with a full glass of water. Um, and I did that for about four days in a row. I think that helped. My uncle also recommended zinc. Um, and so I've been taking that, uh, vitamin D as well. And I usually take turmeric cap capsules anyway, but I doubled them up. Um, a lot of these things are really good for, um, inflammation because you know the the laryngitis has aggravated your vocal cords which has made them swell which is the reason that they can't vibrate and actually like do what they're supposed to do so if you bring down that inflammation then your vocal cords are going to go back to normal and then you're going to be able to do the things that you need to do um so there's there's that um i've also been taking cough medicine i don't have much of a cough i have like a little bit of a cough especially because um i think that's a symptom of me having COVID a couple of months ago is the cough just kind of sticks around and if you talk to most doctors, they're gonna say the cough sticks around, that's what happens. And your body actually gets used to coughing. Um, it gets used to doing that, like just as, like it's like muscle memory. So if you take cough medicine like every night for a week, then that cough is gonna go, that little baby cough that's left is gonna go away because your body's gonna get out of the habit of doing that. So I've also been taking cough medicine, especially at night, so to, to stop my body from, from doing that as muscle memory. Um, so another thing that um, somebody recommended for me to do, I don't know if it worked, uh, was to get Vicks Vapo Rub and put it all along your neck here and then wrap it in a towel for, and keep it on basically as long as you can. Um, I haven't used Vicks in years, but I went and I got some and I tried it. Um, I, I don't think it did much, uh, but you know, I did it and it might, it might work for you. Um, the whole thing about keeping your neck warm, like I, I guess I get it, but it's never really been like a thing for me. Um, I tend to after my shows, <clears throat> I don't put a coat on because like I just sang a two and a half hour show and I'm sweating to death and I don't want to put a coat on. Um, and so, um, so like that, that whole neck warmth scarf thing, it, I don't know. I don't see for myself personally, it might work for you, but I don't see a big difference in myself. Um, another thing that you should be doing, which this, this one is definitely easier said than done is to try and um, decrease the stress that's happening in your life. Because what happens is, um, well stress, everybody knows stress isn't good for your body anyway, but also if you're thinking about things, if you're anxious about things, um, it can actually make something like a sore throat, something like inflammation, something like pain even worse. Because um, the, the blood pressure changes that are happening when you're getting stressed um, have an impact on, on what's going on in those muscles. So like the sore throats that I have, I, by the way, I took five days in a row of COVID tests. I wanna make sure I did not have COVID and I don't. Um, and um, um, those, uh, just thinking about it, being anxious about it, makes that sore throat worse because of what it does to your blood flow. So um, try really hard not to stress, uh, just to, to let yourself heal. Um, I know it's frustrating. I, like, I, I, was, I was beside myself a couple of days ago because I couldn't, I couldn't do these things that I wanted to do, that I love to do, that I was so looking forward to doing, that I prepared to do, um, and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. <clears throat> so... Um, uh, stress is, it is an important factor in there as well. Um, my, my friends could not have been more supportive. I had people calling and emailing and texting and, you know, um, uh, making recommendations and taking videos for me at the first dress rehearsal that I missed and like all these other things. It was just, it was really lovely and supportive. So, um, so yeah, it's, um, laryngitis tends to go away in about one to two weeks. Um, if you really take care of yourself, I think it can be done for anybody well, I mean, I'm not a medical professional. I can't make any guarantees on this. Please do not come back and like try to sue me or something. But I think with very aggressive vocal rest, I think anybody can get over laryngitis in a week. Um, I am at a week right now and I'm, I'm pretty much fine. So after this, going back on vocal rest. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so biggest things in getting your voice back. Stop vocalizing 100%. Get as much sleep as you possibly can. Stay hydrated and don't stress. So I hope this helps somebody out. Um, I was looking for every resource I could find when, um, when my voice was lost and I was trying to get it back quickly. So hopefully this, this helped somebody. Um, if there's any questions about anything, of course you can put them down in the comment section below. And I hope you have a really awesome rest of your day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye.